Hey, what's up guys? It's Phil here, playing Animal Crossing's New Horizons on the Nintendo Switch. In this episode, I'm going to show you the top 19 tips that will make your game a little easier and change the way you play forever. And we're going to get started right now. Welcome back to the channel guys, and if you're new here, run while you can. So, I've searched far and wide, through all the different Reddit posts, the different Facebook groups, random blogs, and even some of the professional gamer websites, so that I can provide to you the most comprehensive tips guide available. These tips can be used by beginners and advanced players alike, and I know that you'll love this guide. A small comment before we get started, I'd really like for you guys to comment below and add more tips and tricks here. Let us all know if you have some better tips by putting them in the comments and then I'll gather them all up and put them in one comment pinned at the top. Now, let's get started. Tip number one, keep a stone axe in your inventory when you're farming for wood. Using a stone axe will allow you to hit the tree three times, you'll get three chunks of wood, and you won't chop the tree down. Tip number two, increase your island star rating by doing a couple things and start them early on in the game. You're going to want to plant as many flowers as you can, but also many different types of flowers. Learn how to cross-pollinate to get darker color flowers. I actually have a video in queue right now for showing you guys all about why you'd want to do this, so be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. I'll give you a little bit of a hint though. It has to do with farming bugs and making a lot of bells. And secondly, decorate your island with various furniture and fencing and all different types of things like that. That's going to increase your overall star rating and this will help with recruiting more villagers. I've actually got a video tutorial on that and it's linked in the description, so if you need help recruiting villagers, then be sure to check that out. Tip number three is once the resident services building has been upgraded to a town hall, be sure to put down the campsite and investigate infrastructure services with Tom Nook. Doing both of these things will eventually lead to more villagers coming to your island. And when you put the campsite down, it allows for random villagers to come and visit. Then, you can see if you'd like to recruit them. And regarding infrastructure services with Tom, you can place down more housing plots and this will allow for more residents to move in either randomly or if you let them in by your choice. I'll put either a card in the top right hand corner of this video or a link in the description for a video I made on this subject as well, so go check it out if you need help there. Tip number four was actually a major lifesaver for me early on. One of the things that I hate most about the game is the fact that you have to watch and listen the same, to the same conversations and crafting animations over and over. So if you tap A a couple times while you're crafting, it makes the building animations go way faster. And of course tapping B makes the text go faster in the conversations. Complete game changer. Tip number five is something that can be done by beginners and it should be done by advanced players as well. You're going to want to do these seven things daily. Number one, if you're enjoying this video then be sure to please the YouTube algorithm and smash that like button. Number two, find the money rock. So out of the three to four rocks that are on your home island, there should be one that rewards you with money. Number three is find the buried money. So every day there should be a shiny uh, new object in the ground that you can dig up. That's buried money. So if you replant it, you can grow a money tree. And I've actually got a video in the works right now about how you can maximize your money in these trees. There's actually a pattern to when you should and should not bury more than a thousand bells in the hole. Hopefully this little picture of a calendar will give you an example of what I'm talking about, but there is a pattern for every island. Number four is go find the daily message in a bottle laying on the beach somewhere. You should be able to get a DIY recipe from that. And number five is go find the villager that's doing a project. You should be able to get a DIY recipe of whatever they're building. Six is run around your island and check for special visitors. There's going to be somebody there that's wandering, selling something, so go check it out. And number seven is log in to the resident services terminal for free Nook Miles. You can log in every single day and you'll get a few Nook Miles. Tip number six is become a better fisherman. And honestly the reason that I made this a tip is because beginners may not realize the potential amount of bells you can get early on in the game. You'll want to dig up clams to make the fish food and then you're going to want to find out where to put the fish food 
so that you can really land the big expensive fish. This is especially useful in the beginning of the game when you're struggling to find more bells, but advanced level players know that this is a valuable source of income. As a side note, on rainy days, fishing is a little bit better, so maybe save back some of your nook miles for a rainy day to help you catch some different types of fish or fish that will sell for a lot more bells. And then uh, kind of another side note is a common problem I see many players having is actually with catching the fish themselves. So a game changer for me when I was st first starting this game was to actually close my eyes and listen instead of watching. If you listen for the change in the sound rather than the visual aspect, it actually makes it a little bit easier. Tip number seven is don't eat fruit unless you want to move a tree or break rocks. That's enough said. Tip number eight is be a bug catcher. This is useful knowledge for, for beginners, but I have seen instances where some people still can't catch spiders. All that you have to do is hold A to sneak up on the bugs to catch them. Release A when you're ready to swipe the net. I also have a link in the description of this video that explains how to build a spider farm and how to build a spider trap, so if needed, be sure to check those videos out. Tip number nine is to keep your net out if you're shaking trees and always shake from the left front or the right front side of the tree. That way, if a wasp nest falls out, you simply just need to swing the net to catch them. And since you're already standing close by, you'll grab them right away. Tip number 10 is one of my favorites, and I honestly would have never thought about doing it. But if you're doing a lot of building, then craft several DIY workbenches and place them throughout your island. Or just craft one and carry it with you at all times, and then you can place it down whenever you're ready to craft again. This will save you time from having to run back and forth between your house and wherever you're building. Tip number 11 is something that is fairly common knowledge by now, but it's still making the top tips list. When mining for money, iron, or other resources from rocks, dig a couple holes behind you so that when you hit it, you don't get knocked back. If you can maximize the amount of times that you hit the rock, then you'll maximize the amount of resources that you get from the rock. Tip number 12. This is something that will be used when doing a spider farm, but it's also something good if you're trying to complete your Critterpedia, and that is to listen for the mole cricket. You will hear it buzzing, and so that's when you want to start digging. Tip number 15 is a great tip if you're playing with other players online. So if you're chatting with people in the game, you can actually plug in a USB keyboard to the Switch to your Nintendo Switch dock, and that way uh, you can just type what you need to say. But if you don't actually have that type of setup where you're close enough to your, to your docking station, then you can actually download the Nintendo Switch Online app on your mobile phone or, or your tablet or whatever you've got and use it to type chat messages. And as a matter of fact, I think they just enabled voice chat functionality as well. So once you get in game with other players, you can actually talk to them with your voice instead of text through that app. Tip number 16 is one of those life-changing, game-changer types of tips. Did you know that you can flick your right controller stick down and it'll hop to the Nook Miles reward automatically? I did not know this, and since I have found this out, I have been a much happier camper. Tip number 17 is related to bells and making money. So a couple of the best ways to make money at this point is to do bug farming and play the stock market, aka selling turnips. So I'd recommend bug farming throughout the week and then buy big with turnips on Sunday. However, I do recommend that you find a community where you can travel to other people's islands to sell your turnips for big profits. You're likely not going to be able to do this locally and win big. I've made millions per week by doing this. Believe it or not, I've actually got another video tutorial on that, so I'll put that in the description of the video as well. Tip number 18 is to make sure to sell all of your bugs to the bug guy and sell all of your fish to the fish guy. I don't actually have these guys on my island at the moment, but you can save your bugs and fish somewhere on your island and wait for them to show up, and it can be well worth it because they'll pay you a lot more than, than Nook's Cranny will. And tip number 19 is, is something that is super vital, super important, and that is a better way to preserve your shovel. So if you're digging holes and instead of using your shovel to cover that hole again you can actually hit the Y button and what you know while you're standing next to the dirt hole and it'll kick the dirt 
over the over the hole instead of using your shovel and this will make your shovel last a lot longer. If you want access to more videos like this then be sure to subscribe and hit the like button.